So now I'm gonna show you the crisscross. It very much looks like basket weave. This is one of those stitches. I was so shocked that this yarn could do this. Really quite excited about it. There are patterns available. You'll see um, this particular pattern on ball bands as well and uh, you will be really quite excited about this. So there's actually a sequence of two rows that go back and forth in order to create this. So what I've done is a little cheat sheet for myself which I'm happy to share with you. Just grab a pencil and a piece of paper and you can write it out too and uh, it'll just make it a lot easier for you. So let's uh, do this without further ado. So here's my little cheat sheet. We're going to start with our strand and we're going to count the number of stitches that we want. In order to get the crisscross to happen we need an even number. So in this case there's six loops that are used in order to get it. So you can do six, eight, ten. You can do big blankets. Whatever you want as long as it's an even number. We're going to start here and then we're going to then uh, capture our cast on for the first six loops and then we start doing the crisscrossing in row, row number two. So row number two we're going to skip the first stitch and then we're doing our crisscross. So you'll notice that I highlighted the one cross over more than the other one. So this is the one that's in front. This one's in behind in front and behind. So it's all the same going across the same row. Then in the next one we pick up the ones that we've skipped to in order to start and we cross it over. So these this time is in front. Do you see that? That's what's creating that whole look and the other one is more uh, in the behind that you see. So we're, for the ones that we skip we pick up that one and we cross it over with these two here and then we cross over and cross over. So whenever you're going in one direction the one that's in front is leaning to one side and the other direction it's leaning on the other which gives you the look. Then you just have to repeat rows two and three over and over again until you're satisfied with it and then cast off at the end. So let's get started and let's show you how to do this stitch. So take the yarn and you're just gonna turn it like this so that the ending tail is on the left hand side and you wanna do it so that loops are facing up. So I only wanna do six. So I wanna count six loops. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that is my pattern that I'm going to be doing today. So I'm going to cast on. So I'm gonna take the next one and coming from the back to the front I'm just gonna pull through and then just move this strand in front so that you can scoop it up into your project as you go. So grabbing each one of the loops that are in sequence just pulling through the front six that you have. You can do as many um, stitches as you want as long as it's an even number. So it could have been eight, ten, twelve. I think in the blanket there might have been sixty of these loops and so they're pretty easy to be able to maintain in order to do it. The secret to doing this kind of work completely to be really quite transparent with you is at the end of each of the rows just go back and pull the slack that is in these that's in these loops. That's gonna get it to look its very best and you can also see if there's a twist. So if, if it's not twisting right, if it's not sitting right you will see a twist. So if it looks like this you know it's twisted. So when you pull up see it'll stay. Because of the thickness of this yarn by uh, Bernat Alizé is that it will really hold really quite nicely for you. So we're gonna have a total of six of these stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So again as long as it's an even number you're good to go. So let's review on row number two going in this direction. To crisscross whenever we go from left to right is always gonna be the same. So what we want to do is that we want to skip the first loop completely and we want to go and do the, sec the second and the third. So if you saw my diagram you will notice that this loop here will cross over the other one. So it's in front. And I want you to cross them over and kind of pinch them and they'll look like a little bow tie. Quite cute. So the one that is now here is the first one that you're going to put this loop in. So just ignore the one you skipped. And you're just gonna come from the back to the front. And now grab this one that you crossed over and pull a loop through. So that's been done. So you're gonna come to the next two and you're gonna keep doing this for as long as it is and remember that it is this loop crossing over the front of the other loop. Just pinch it and work in sequence because you're changing the order of these stitches. Now in this row, number two, we are going to skip the final stitch here 
and we skip the front stitch. So it doesn't matter how long it is as long as you skip both and then once you've got all the way across just pull up on your stitches make sure there's no twist in this. You'll ruin the look if there's a twist. So make sure there is no twist. So now let's move along and let's go row number three which is going this way and this will happen every time. Whenever you're going in this direction the final loop will cross over the, this loop, the, the next one. So we're gonna cross them over and then you start. So the next available loop on the working strand you're gonna pull through the first one because you've now changed the order and now the next available loop is gonna go through the second one. So you've captured the one you skipped before. So the next two you are going to cross them over and the first one will cross over the second one. And now take the next available loop on the working strand from the back to the front. We're always gonna work back to front on this one and then take the next loop and take it through the second one. And you'll work all the way across like that until you get to the final two. So the final two, it's again in the same sequence. So this one's gonna cross over in front of the one that is the skipped one from row number two or from row number one. So two rows down and then you're just gonna keep them in sequence. Just like that. And that is row number three. So we just have to repeat rows number two and three for the duration of the project and once you're at the very edge just pull, pull up on them. That'll sort everything out. If anything is weird twisted you'll see it at this point so you know when to stop and fix if you have to. Nothing's worse than if you don't check that and you realize that you got one that looks twisted. Now whenever going in the other direction we should still st have six loops. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. We're now going to move and do row number two in this direction. So we skip the first one. So remember in row number two the first one crosses over the second one and you're going to take the working strand and push it through the first one that you've just now repositioned. and the working strand the next loop through this one and that will lock those two into a crisscross shape. You take your next two, cross them over and you take your working strand the next available loop like that. So you're going to skip the very last stitch that was available to you. So this you skip this one and you skip the first one. So just pull up on the ones that you did do and now we're gonna go and do row number three in this direction. So we take this one here, the one that was skipped and we cross it over the, the next one and we take the next working loop and feed it through. So these loops kinda lock all the positioning in, in place once you're doing all this crossing. So you take the next two and cross them over so you, you can see that it's just diving in and out of each other and it's just the way that you're crossing them. Just like that. And then you take the final two and cross over. And lock those into position. So you just keep repeating. So once you're at the end just give it a good tug and you're good to go and you can see that the crisscross shape that you see within the ball band and any patterns that you'll find online look really quite amazing and it's just evolving sets of two.